If there is one animal in the world you need to fear, it's the mama animal. It doesn't even matter what the species is. Just know that when mom is protecting her young, she is going to go at you like a samurai if she thinks you might be a threat to her, whether she's a lion or a goldfish. From the true giant of the animal kingdom to the freaky creature with too many legs, we've lined up the 15 most protected babies in the animal world. <sighs> Number 15. Elephant the relationship between a young elephant and its mother is unquestionably the strongest of any animal on the planet. If the baby is a girl, she will usually stay with her mother until she is an adult, and she will almost certainly never be separated from her until the mother passes away. When they are young, male elephants stay close to their moms in the same way as female elephants do, but in their case, this isn't a long-term relationship. When a male adolescent hits puberty at the age of 12, he becomes too boisterous for the others to bear, so he's gotta head out alone. Female elephants are introduced to parenting at an early age. Elephants live in groups of female elephants called herds. A herd is led by an older female elephant, who is responsible for guiding the herd to safe feeding sites, away from drought and seeing potential hazards early on. Young female elephants show an interest in caring for their herd's calves when they are juveniles. In exchange, it teaches them how to care for young elephants and prepares them for when they have their own children. Female elephants not only bear their young for over two years, but they also teach their kids. Elephant mothers educate their calves how to stand up, find food, swim, detect hazards, and so much more. Female elephants are among the only wild creatures that protect, raise, and educate their offspring. So if your mom's name is Nelly, you might just grow up to be awesome. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 14. Octopus. Octopuses are fascinating creatures with incredible problem-solving skills and beautiful camouflage. However, they are generally short-lived, lasting only one to two years. This is because they are semelparous, meaning they only reproduce once before dying. Once a female octopus has laid her eggs, she is done. The mother will even stop feeding herself to nurse her eggs and stay with them until they hatch, slowly starving to death. She will occasionally tear off her own skin and devour the tips of her tentacles in captivity. That's dedicated parenting, even more so than the guy who shows up drunk to every baseball game to cheer on his kid and fight with the other parents. Scientists have now discovered why this dreadful predicament occurs. It has to do with the octopus's optic gland, which is comparable to the pituitary gland in humans. Researchers removed this gland in a 1977 study and discovered that the octopus's mothering instincts vanished. She gave up her eggs, resumed eating, and had a considerably longer life as a result. It's also unclear why male octopuses die soon after mating, despite the fact that they don't have the same parental responsibility to care for the eggs. So when it comes to our tentacled pals, there are still a lot of riddles to be solved. Number 13. Panda in the early stages of a panda cub's existence, genetic testing is the only method to determine its gender. At this age, not only are moms very protective of their babies, but pandas are also born without genitalia. That's not all they're lacking when they're born. Giant pandas in their infancy are nearly unrecognizable. Pandas are pink, wrinkled, blind, screaming animals about the size of a baseball when they emerge from their moms, rather than their distinctive black and white animals that we know. Pandas are born with a frail, undeveloped body. Newborn pandas are 1 900th the weight of their mothers, weighing between 3 and 5 ounces. This makes them among the tiniest mammal infants when compared to their mothers. Human moms weigh roughly 20 times as much as their newborns, whereas killer whales weigh 50 times as much. Panda babies cannot see, 
hear, or crawl, so they rely on their mothers for milk and safety. They are so helpless that in their initial weeks of existence, they are unable to control their body temperatures or even expel waste on their own. Instead, the mother is responsible for both, holding her cubs to keep them warm and massaging their bellies to stimulate the muscles that allow pee and excrement to be released. Even when they need to feed or drink, panda moms do not leave their children in these early weeks. Because motherhood is such a hard task, pandas who give birth to twins sometimes can only care for one of them and must leave the other. Scientists intervene in captivity to care for the neglected youngster, even attempting to switch the cubs so that both receive their mother's attention and milk. Number 12. Sperm Whale Whales require the care of their moms. Cetaceans are incredible moms that devote months, if not years, to raise their young. Making her calf her main focus takes a significant amount of time and effort on her part. These maternal efforts, on the other hand, secure the calf's survival and eventually the lineage's continuation. All whale species nurse their young for several months. However, the length of time varies by species. Female sperm whales have two nipples hidden beneath the belly button in two tiny holes on either side of the vaginal slit. Sucking muscles are absent in cetaceans. Instead, the calf stimulates the nipple by pressing on it, and milk is discharged into its mouth as a result. Its tongue's edge is coated with petal-like projections that are thought to increase suction and even guide milk into the throat. These petals fade away when the calf grows older and is weaned. Female sperm whales and their young form pods of up to 20 individuals. Around the age of four, the male sperm whale departs, occasionally forming its own pod with younger adult males. As the males become older, this pod will likewise break up. When disturbed, sperm whales create a margarite formation with their tails pushed outward to protect a vulnerable pod member or calf. Number 11. Centipede Centipedes, Latin for 100 feet, are anthropods, which are invertebrates like insects, spiders, and crustaceans. All centipedes are members of the Chylopoda class, which comprises over 3,300 distinct species. They may be found on every continent except Antarctica and in warm and tropical settings. They have the greatest variety of shape and form. The majority of centipedes are burrowing critters that dwell in soil or leaf litter, under tree bark or behind stones. Although you wouldn't expect a centipede to be a wonderful mother, a surprising percentage of them adore their young. In an underground tunnel, female soil centipedes, Geophilomorpha, and tropical centipedes, Scolopendromorpha, deposit an egg mass. The mother then wraps her body over the eggs and stays with them until they hatch, keeping them safe from harm. I'm sure she has plenty of hands to tuck you in at night as well. However, there is one fascinating fact regarding centipedes that you might not be expecting. Centipedes, despite their common appellation meaning 100 feet, can have substantially more or less than 100 legs, but never exactly 100. A centipede can have as little as 15 pairs of legs or as many as 191 pairs, depending on the species. Centipedes always have an odd number of leg pairs, regardless of species. As a result, they never have precisely 100 legs. Number 10. Crocodile if you're searching for one of the most shockingly compassionate moms in the animal kingdom, head to the Zambezi or Okavango rivers instead of the Nile. Nile crocodiles have been present for over 80 million years, but there are now very few in regions where they were formerly numerous, such as the Nile River. They are nevertheless common in many rivers and lakes in central, southern, and eastern Africa, and are not considered vulnerable. One of the reasons cited for this evolutionary longevity is that female crocodiles are the nicest and most loving of all reptile moms, despite the fact that they lay up to 80 eggs. Males that shout, smack their snouts in the water, blow water out of their noses, and make a variety of other crocodilian noises are said to attract females but the females are then left to raise the hatchlings on their own. 
Mother and owl crocodiles select a suitable location to deposit and bury their eggs, using soft sand to dig a half-meter deep nest a few meters from a river or lake in a warm, sunny place to aid incubation, and with no threat of flooding, and a protected location nearby. Turtles, tortoises, snakes, and lizards, for example, abandon their hidden eggs, and the hatchlings are born ready to run. An owl crocodile comes ashore to gather her kids, as shown in this footage, filmed in Uganda. Despite having nature's most lethal bite, she collects them in a neck pouch beneath her deadly fangs and leads them to the water. Plus, no kid at school is gonna mess with you with a mom like that. Number 9. Spider while arachnids display various degrees of maternal care, Joanne Sulal, an archaeologist at the University of the West Indies, believes the South American spider Mesa Bolivar Arantiacus is a fantastic spider mom. According to Sulal, this colorful mother-to-be holds the egg sac continually in her teeth until it hatches, depriving herself of nourishment until the kids emerge. According to Sulal, wolf spider mothers carry their egg sacs on their spinnerets or silk-producing organs for safety. When the spiderlings hatch, they ride on her back until they are ready to molt and leave their eight-legged mode of transportation. The spider kids, on the other hand, may be rather naughty. According to a new study, some female spiders allow their offspring to devour them alive proving that they are long-suffering mothers. Stegodyphus dumicola, a South African species, dwells in big family groups that share communal nests and parenting responsibilities. Because females mature more slowly than males, only about 40% of females get the chance to reproduce. And those who don't, the so-called virgin females, go to great lengths to care for their sister's babies. When the eggs hatch, both the mother and the virgin females produce a nutritious fluid that they give to the babies via mouth. This is an extremely demanding procedure. In the end, the female will liquefy and exhaust nearly all of her resources. When she is nearly depleted, the offspring will crawl onto her and begin eating her. Number 8. Orangutan Orangutans, who roam in Borneo and Sumatra's treetops, have the longest upbringing of any animal. Primatologists say this is due to the vast quantity of information they must acquire in order to live in the jungle. They must learn to eat, sleep, and defend themselves in their surroundings. Only their moms provide this instruction and nurture, as their fathers leave after mating and will never return. For the first one to two years of their lives, orangutan newborns cling to their mothers, moving together through the treetops and sleeping in the same nests. After the age of two, some mothers and babies hold hands, a practice known as buddy travel. Other moms carry their children until they are five years old. They usually nurse until they enter puberty at the age of eight. They stay with their moms until they are around 10 years old, moving and sleeping in the same trees and eating together. Mother orangutans pass down their customs to their offspring. Orangutans in Borneo, for example, have learned to clean their chins with handfuls of leaves. Sumatran orangutans learn to gather large amounts of leaves to use as seat cushions and as hand protection when handling spiky or rough pods. Number 7. Hornbill Hornbills have lived on this planet for around 15 million years, according to fossil records. Hornbills have formidable bills, and one species, the Great Pied Hornbill, have beaks up to 13 inches long. That's a lot of beak. In the rainforests of Southeast Asia, the Solomon Islands, and Africa, they utilize their strong beaks to collect insects and navigate through dense trees. Some hornbills are the size of turkeys, while the African dwarf red-billed hornbill, which is the size of a dove, is the smallest of the hornbills. What matters is that they all look pretty damn weird, 
Anyway, when it comes to mothering, hornbill eggs are laid several days apart by the female, resulting in a staggered hatching pattern. She is extremely vulnerable during this time, since she is unable to fly due to her molting. The male has the extraordinary ability to protect the mother and chicks by enclosing the hole with mud walls. It will then feed the female while she is incubating the eggs through a tiny hole in the wall. Ground hornbills, which nest in unsealed holes, logs or rock faces on the ground are the only species that do not engage in this activity. Number 6. Spittlebug the spittlebug might be at fault if your trees, plants, or grass are covered in white foam. Spittlebugs, also known as frog hoppers, are named for the secretion they generate, but they don't generally cause much damage to plants unless they're hanging out in large numbers. An adult spittlebug will quickly leap off a plant if disturbed. The female spittlebug deposits her eggs on the host plant's hidden areas, such as beneath the stems and leaves. If the spittlebug takes up residence in a tree, she will deposit her eggs on the bark. Around most regions of the US, eggs hatch in the middle of spring. The nymphs go through a number of molts after they hatch. Excess sap is expelled out the anus, where it is combined with a chemical generated by epidermal glands, which increases surface viscosity and stabilizes the foam, allowing it to stay longer. This combination is pushed out of the abdomen under pressure, forming bubbles when it mixes with air. Some species have been known to create up to 80 bubbles every minute, as the bubbles appear, the spittlebug moves its belly up and down, reaching back with its legs and pulling the bubbles forward over its back. The foam serves several objectives, including sheltering the nymph from predators, providing insulation from temperature fluctuations, and maintaining a low humidity environment to prevent the nymph from drying out. I guess spittlebug moms don't teach table manners too well, though. Number 5. Big Mouth Hat Tyrannochromis macrostoma, sometimes known as the Big Mouth Hap, is a cichlid that is only found in Lake Malawi and loves the rocky shallows that lake provides. How does the Big Mouth Hap take care of her children? Mouth brooding. She'll do this for three to six weeks or until they're capable of taking care of themselves, which for most teenagers involves learning how to call for pizza. Mouth brooding refers to the practice of rearing young in the mouth, either from eggs or after after hatching for safety reasons. Although a number of species such as the Darwin's frog undergo mouth brooding, fish are by far the most common mouth brooders. Mouth brooding has developed in numerous distinct fish families separately. Mouth brooders are sometimes economically significant fish, particularly among the Tilipines and Arowanas. If the fry are to be artificially grown, fry harvesting, or getting the brooding fish to open its mouth and release the fry is critical. Harvesting may be monitored by an authority in the case of endangered species, such as Asian arowana, to confirm that the fish farm is a legitimate producer of captive bred fish. Synodontis multipunctatus, a type of catfish, deceives other mouth brooding species into raising their young. When the cichlid lays her eggs, the catfish consumes them before the cichlid can scoop them up and lay her own fertilized eggs, which the cichlid picks up, believing they are hers. Sneaky. Number 4. Tadpoles vs. Snake Embryonic frogs, like some other animals, can leave an egg early if they are in danger. An egg is an excellent location for a tadpole to live in terms of housing. It provides physical protection and prevents the occupant from being dehydrated. Eggs, like many other charming residences, aren't necessarily always the best place to live. Being packed in a gelatinous mass or clutch might limit the amount of oxygen available to certain frog eggs. Floods can wash away eggs and fungal diseases can destroy them. They also make a tasty meal for predators like snakes and wasps. When confronted with such danger, it may appear that the eggs have little chance of surviving, but red-eyed tree frog embryos have a few tricks up their sleeves. From Mexico to Colombia, the beautiful red-eye tree frog may be found in jungles. Karen Workenton, a biologist, discovered that these embryos are capable of analyzing a range of risks in unexpected ways, and that if danger arises, they might 
waked up to hatch days sooner than they would normally. The technique is known as environmentally cute hatching, and researchers have discovered evidence that it works for a variety of species including flatworms and snails, fish, frogs, and salamanders, turtles, and birds. When the neighborhood turns bad, you gotta break out of your home and just run for it, it seems. Number 3. Polar Bear Polar bears in seasonal ice regions like Hudson Bay come ashore in the summer after eating all winter. Females who made it in the spring and are big enough to enter a maternity burrow in the fall, which is quickly covered by snowdrifts, the mother bears do not eat or drink while in the den. Instead, they rely on their bodily fat for survival. They give birth to one to three vulnerable cubs in the late fall or early winter and nurse them until they are healthy enough to leave the den three to four months later. In a polar bear's life, the demanding phase is considered the most perilous. Then it's time to wake up and you better believe mama is a hungry. She's gone eight months without a meal. Once the cubs are mature enough to endure the rigors of the Arctic outside the den, the female will immediately travel to the sea ice to hunt seals. When polar bear cubs are born, their mother's milk is around 31% fat, which provides enough energy to help them develop quickly. As the cubs get older and feed less, the fat level and composition of the mother's milk changes, becoming closer to 18% fat by the time they're a year old. Although polar bear mothers may nurse their pups until they are two years old, some females wean their babies after their first birthday. It might be determined by the mother's physical condition. Nursing cubs is highly energy intensive. In any case, mom makes sure her cubs have plenty to eat. Number two, dolphin. Being a mom is always tough, but it takes a little extra something to adopt a child that's not your own and raise it as though it were. Not all humans are capable of this, but dolphin moms are, and it's not even just other dolphin kids either. The first documented example of a wild bottlenose mom adopting a calf of another species has been reported, according to recent study. In the coastal seas near French Polynesia in 2014, researchers saw a bottlenose mother caring for an unusual looking male calf, as well as what was assumed to be her biological child. The strange one month old's nose was short and blunt, unlike bottlenose dolphins, which have narrow beaks. The orphan was eventually identified as a melon-headed whale, which is a whole other species and genus of dolphin. Adoption is rare in wild animals, with the majority of adoptions occurring between members of the same species. In 2006, University of Sao Paulo primatologist Patricia Izar witnessed a group of capuchins caring for a young marmoset, which was the only other scientifically reported example involving an adopted orphan of a different species and genus. Despite the fact that the mother already had a child, the lone melon-headed calf never left his new mother's side once he arrived. The three were regularly observed swimming together, which is rare because dolphin moms usually only have one baby at a time. Number 1. Meerkat Meerkat groups can range in size from 3 to 50 members, a dominating pair, a few additional non-breeding adults, a swarm of youngsters typically from many reproductive sessions, and a cluster of stunningly adorable pups make up the majority of them. A troop of meerkats will emerge from their nighttime cave before dawn, and before moving off for the day's feeding, they must warm up on the top of their burrow for several minutes. Meerkats in southern Africa eat venomous scorpions as a primary source of food, but it takes time to learn how to manage the deadly prey. That's why mums and other family members are patient tutors to their babies, teaching them how to handle arachnids with care. Adults, for example, will cripple scorpions, rendering their stingers useless, and then offer the still-living prey to older pups for training. However, meerkats have a sinister side. Meerkat society is pleasant enough after the reproductive order is established, but woe betide any female subordinate who has the audacity to become pregnant and give birth. 
Her children are frequently slaughtered. Pretty dark. Which of these mothers did you think did the best job? How do they compare to your own awesome mom? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.